hello, hello, hello. That's Sir David the Bard. It's, you know, it's a little dark outside, so I hope the lights make up for some of it. I don't know. <laughs> do I have to do waterboard me light? Okay, all right, that's fair. Um, listen, I wanted to do um, a video here on, uh, I don't live in Utah, you know that. I live in Australia down here in Kangaroo City, but sometimes I'll go up to Utah, and uh, they always get pissed off when I walk my kangaroo on a leash. You know, walk around the outside of the Salt Lake Temple, and he's jumping. <laughs> but he's on a leash, you know. And uh, he doesn't crap like the dogs do. So anyway, um, I'm coming to you from um, a small town in uh, Utah, and I want to tell you what happened to me. I went to the store because <laughs> when I went to court. I look like shit. <laughs> you know, I don't dress anymore. I have shorts, <laughs> and I, I just, you know, go with the flow. But you know, when you go to court, uh, you don't go with the flow. You better look like you know what the hell you're doing, even if you don't. Um, in Utah, uh, everybody wears a suit, even the women. And uh, if you don't have a suit on, you're dog shit. And that's in front of the judge, too. So I said, well, to mercy. <laughs> Honey, I gotta buy a suit. I gotta buy a suit. Now, I haven't had a nice suit. God, I haven't had a nice suit since I was in my 30s when I sold insurance for uh, New England Life. I had a bitchin' three-piece suit, you know, with the the vest and the 14 karat gold cross pins. You know, I played the whole uh, routine. Been there, done that. Well, this time I went over uh, to Mr. Mac M A C. And Mr. Mac, I didn't know, but <laughs> they um, provide all the suits for the Mormon missionaries that are going out into the world. And uh, I thought they were just a suit store. Maybe some Mormons would go there for a suit. Well, long story long, I go in. Guy comes up to me and he goes, um, can we help you? I said, yeah, I'd like to buy a suit. He says, well, okay, can you tell me about it? And I said, yeah, I'd like a three-piece suit. We can do that. I'd like a, a pinstripe suit. We can do that. And he says, we can do anything. Anything else. I mean, in a loud voice, you know the damn bar. I get banned from every store I go into. I go, yeah. Could you get me a 14-year-old that I could marry? In a loud voice. In the Mormon store. He looks at me like, you know, i just taken a dump on the floor. He goes, well... Well, the Reformed Mormon dance. Well, we, we, we can't do that. We don't think that that's appropriate. And I said, well, there's some people in the world that do. <laughs> I didn't want to get into it anymore. So he takes me over to the suits that have <laughs> the anti-Mormon uh, spray inside the suit. So when you put it on, <laughs> your penis rocks off. So I go, whoa, whoa, I don't want that suit. So anyway, I find two suits. And I say, well now, you have these special deals on television. I said, don't I get one of those special uh, deals? Oh, yes, yes. So you can have that suit right there. We'll give you uh, for, for 300 bucks. And we'll give you uh, another one for a dollar. Eh, I'll take it. So I got two suits for $300. Well, I go up to the counter and I'm paying for it, and on the front of the counter there is a box, and it says, Temple Recommend Holders, and it's a little plastic thing to hold like credit cards in, and it has pictures of the Mormon church. <laughs> I gotta say to the guy, D do non-members of the Mormon church get as much uh, discount? Well, uh, I mean, uh, oh yeah, 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 we're all the same. <laughs> you like it, bastard. You lying bastard. So I know I paid more than if I was going on a mission, but uh, he knew I wasn't going on a mission. So another guy comes through the door while I'm paying, and uh, the other salesman goes up and says, what can I do for you? And I like a suit and say, well, well for like sacrament meeting? God, I'm like, I'm, I'm like him in a Mormon chapel. So anyway, I'm sitting there paying. Another old boy comes in, and uh, they said to him, well, you know, how you doing? Good, good. Is it you a graduate of BYU? <laughs> Jesus. The guy looked like he was a zombie. Yes. Well, how old are you doing? How old are you now, Jack? 
89. <laughs> He's buying his suit. For what? The casket? I don't know. Anyway. So, anyway, that was uh, my experience there. Uh, just trying to buy a suit in a small town in, uh, in uh, Salt Lake, the Mormons. Uh, that's the way they do it. Now, here's something else that I'm going to bring up, and I don't think anyone, again, you watch the bard, <laughs> I'm outside the box. No one has ever done this before. How successful it will be, I don't know. In Utah, if you go to court in Utah, most people will wear a white shirt. The attorneys, the judges, uh, and the um, plaintiff and the defendant. In a cult, in a cult, you can spot other cult members. And if they're in your cult, it's like the Masons. Is there no help for, uh, is there no help for a poor widow's son? Joseph Smith's last words flinging out the, uh, the uh, Carthage jail window and landing down by the well. You are obligated, you are obligated as a Mormon to side with Mormons and to support them and to be Mormons against non-Mormons. Mormons against non-Mormons. Now I applied here for a jury trial on my, uh, on my uh, a collection account guy that he's trying to get me to pay $236. I don't think I owe it. I got a bill that says zero from the hospital. But anyway, he walks into court and he turns towards the jury. They're going to see the little happy face right here or they're going to see the bottom of the garments just above his knee those are the two spots if he takes his coat off you can see it in the back that is how they magically signal to each other I'm a Mormon you're a Mormon we're together is that a fair trial is that a trial of my peers a jury of my peers it's not Here's where I'm going, folks. <laughs> I'm going to make the, the uh, opposing attorney not wear garments, or he has to cover them up with extra clothing over it so it cannot be identified. He comes in with that secret combination, smiley face garments underneath his shirt. I don't have a fuck, not a fucking chance. I don't say fuck on this show. Fuck that. I sometimes do say no. <laughs> he doesn't have a chance. He'll communicate that right to my jury. And the jury will smile at me like the Chinese. Every time you say to the Chinese, I'm going to kill you and your wife and steal all your money. Go, they always smile. The Mormons got that from the Chinese. And so they act like they're playing fair. They hide the ball. They hide the ball in the court system. So, I go in. My shirt shows no garments. The opposing counsel goes in. His shirt shows garments. They know he has promised to be honest in his business dealings with the temple recommend. He's not, but they think that he is. And so anything he says carries much more weight than what an apostate or a non-member who's uh, not under the influence of the Holy Ghost during a trial. So I'm going to um, uh, refuse to have any jurors that are uh, LDS. I, I have a, a preemptive, what they call a preemptive right. Uh, there, there's uh, certain questions you ask, I guess. Now, I'm not an expert. This is the first time I've done a jury, okay? But I want to learn. So uh, the members come up, and, and you can choose what people you want on the jury, and we have to agree. Well, I'm not going to take, number one, any men. I want all women in a collection case, because one of my pieces of evidence is a single mom uh, that has an autistic child that this guy has uh, got a bench warrant out for and is going to put her in jail. Think the women are going to say, hey, hey, hey. Mormon men will say, he's got garments, he's a state president, the bard loses. Well, anyway, I'm not going to allow any jurors to wear uh, any secret combination clothing. Uh, it's kind of like going into a court of law uh, and you're an uh, Arab, uh, Arab, Arab, an Arab, and you wear, you know, the, the um, not the turbine, <laughs> the turban. And then you get three tur uh, jurors that are wearing turbans. Hey, 
there's no place in court for religious stuff. Now, you take the you take the garments off the Mormon. They're not naked. Mormons are not naked if you take the garments off them, because if opposing counsel says anything that has to do with the Mormon's secret words, he's already sent a signal off. He's a Mormon. I'm not a Mormon. Now, because I've been a Mormon, I know the secret words and the secret phrases. And so when he says that, for instance, let's say he, um, he uses the word uh, phrase, well, uh, Mr. Bard, don't you feel um, that we need to be honest in our business dealings? Whoa, there's a temple question. Whoa, there's a temple question. And then I have to say to him, uh, uh, basically, I can, I can counter by saying, oh, well, yes, of course, I, I think being honest in our business dealings uh, is a very, very important part of life. And I also think that um, polygamy should never have been practiced and probably was not practiced by the Mormons. Bam! He says one, I say another. Now the jury goes, hmm, which one is the Mormon? Or if I say, well, when I was at BYU, bam, I win, I win. As soon as I say I was at BYU, they know I'm Mormon, they know, you know my education, they know, they know, they know. So there's secret phrases and secret things that can be used in a courtroom that shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. So if I strip them naked, they're still going to use key words and key phrases. And, you know, I may have to sit on my, uh, you know, juror table and go, pay me, lay me, and ail me, so they think I'm a Mormon. Well, then they think, well, gee, he's an anti-Mormon because he put that out in public. Is he a Mormon? Isn't he? I'll tell you, to get a fair trial in Utah, that you can roll over and bend your and kiss your ass goodbye. Anyway, I, I, I think I get eight jurors. I don't think I get twelve. I think I get eight jurors. And um, I get to help pick who I want and who I don't want. I don't want Mormons. I don't want uh, men, uh, especially older men who go, nay, these people don't pay their debts, they're on welfare, you know, this Republican idea, conservative idea. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know uh, Mormons have secret ways of uh, identifying each other. Now you'll often see Mormons uh, pat each other on the back. What they're, de de uh, what they're doing is trying to feel the back of the garment. Now they know. It's me and you. Me and you. And uh, oh God is there no help for a, a poor widow's son. Uh, Mormons stick together. It's a cult. And if you can identify that cult, uh, with other members, they're going to stick together. So if you get into a jury room and one of the women uh, says, well, you know, I don't think uh, the bard is LDS and he's probably lying, uh, the other members of the jury, if they're LDS, they're going to agree. They're gonna, it's automatic. It's automatic. Justice in a Utah court is laughable. Same way with the judge. You don't know if he's LDS, but you don't get to be a judge in Utah unless you're a Mormon. So, when I write to the court and say I don't want any secret signs and symbols used in my trial, including, um, I don't know if I'll use the word magic because now they know I'm anti, including undergarments that show through identifying religious affiliation. It will not be tolerated in, in my jury. It won't be. It, it, it has nothing to do with the facts of the trial. Well, no one's ever done that. I'm sure. I'm, I'm positive. No one has ever done that. And now what is the jury going, or what's the judge going to do? Is he going to say, well, you can wear any magic stuff in here you want. So does that mean I can come in in a clown suit? Or is that disrespecting of the court? they got a problem. They've got a problem. So I may make all the jurors and uh, me and the other uh, counsel wear robes. You can't see. Are they Mormons or are they not Mormons? And I'm going to cut my hair real short and, uh, you know, spanky. He's got some surprises coming. So anyway, tomorrow I'm going to file for a jury trial. Um, I'm also filing... <laughs> you guys are going to kill me. The Bard! Doing this shit is so expensive, you won't believe it. Everything you do costs money in the court system. So poor people, they don't have a chance. They don't have a damn chance. 
you can have a jury trial, but you got to pay for it. <laughs> you, you know, you can call a witness, but you have to pay a fee for them to show up, and then a dollar every four miles that they have to drive to get there. So <laughs> you can get in to the thousands of dollars very quickly. But even in Utah, there's a thing called waiver of fees. It's just a paper you fill out and you put down all of your assets. Well, if you have no assets, <laughs> you don't pay any fees. You can get the most expensive shit for free. The law is the law. It's not cheating anyone. It's not um, cutting any corners. It's just that most of the time, the law is on the, the rich side, the big people side. Waiver of fees is on poor people's side. So if you put down, you don't have the assets. And it's true, you don't want to lie on that form. Good Lord, that's a, a criminal offense. But you tell the truth on that form, send it in, the court approves it. My jury is now free. <laughs> and maybe my appeal will be free if I lose. Learn the system, folks. Don't let these bullies bully you. Don't let bullies bully you. Any time someone tries to tangle you in the court system, you always answer. If they accuse you wrongly and you don't answer, you're guilty. Under the law, you're guilty. And trying to go back and set that judgment aside is like a nightmare. So anyway, I just want to let you know, uh, I'll show you my suit. When I get dressed up in the suit, you won't recognize me. You won't, because I'll have the white beard and the Santa Claus hair. <laughs> that's what Spanky has why can't I match Spanky <laughs> so anyway when the judge says you have to take your garments off to hear this case that will be one in a lifetime order from a judge or if he says to me Bard you can't tell people how to dress in here and I can say well your honor then what I can do is hold up cards that says Spanky's a liar Spanky is dishonest Spanky is cruel. I can communicate that way. If they're going to communicate secretly and silently, I have the same rights. So anyway, it'll be an interesting decision what the judge says and does. And uh, I think they're all beginning to go, this is unusual. This person <laughs> is not a human. He has no boundaries. No boundaries. He's now na renamed Spanky. He's given Spanky a new name. And he's taking his garments off him. <laughs> the laws are the laws. Laws are for the rich. The poor, we are like in a meat grinder in the law system. We always lose. I don't. Because I don't like bullies. I can think outside the box. I can sit here 10 hours a day and do uh, research on the case and on the law. So anyway, I'll keep you posted. Don't cut my throat. Don't rip my heart out. In fact, this is what I'm going to do in court. <laughs> Judge said, what are you doing, Mr. Bart? I said, I'm communicating to the jury. So anyway, health and enable, Marin the bone, strength and loyalty, and the same power and peace would be upon me and upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity. Um, this bar is gone. <laughs>